Okay, so it's well, it feels like a long, long year since we started the season, um, and we just thought we'd get you together to see what what your thoughts were. Obviously, we spoke after the last game, um, and just see what it feels like having filled with a bit of hindsight now, and and not in the moment how it feels having completed a first full season at Mosley as manager and assistant manager. It was good. Yeah. Um, having done about four pre seasons to to get there, it was good to finally get a get a season finished, um, and achieve a lot of what we set out to achieve at the start of the season as well. What would be your personal highlight from the season? Well, I think my highlights are probably the same. We had a week where we went to Kids Grove, uh, one 0 down at half time, turned it around with three wonder goals, went to Runcorn Linnets and beat them four 0 and went to Hyde and beat them two one on their place. Um, not great. A couple of months after that, but it was, uh, that week was was really good. It's difficult to pick anything, any individual point out of that. Yeah, that, that week was a mm. was a great week. I think um, how we bounced back at half time against Kids Grove, and then we scored three worldies. Um, and then after that, yeah, going to run corner and, and putting four past them in in the short space of time, second half, and then and then to hide the, the famous hide where I think that's probably the first time we experienced a, a full proper away end. Um, yeah, and, yeah. after that worked a great couple of months, but that was brilliant, that. I know it wasn't a great couple of months after that, but you, you mentioned the Kids Grove game. Uh, and going in 1-0 down at half-time, quite a few people said, it feels like this is this is where Mosley are, where we played really well. We're coming down at half-time. Do you feel like that turnaround is something that you've you've got from the team, that you've brought people in to, to working harder, but making things happen more? I think we're on the right path. I don't think we've got it right yet. I, I don't think we uh, manage games well enough as a team. And, and th- that's not the only example. Look at the run um, where we lost games by the odd goal and, and couldn't couldn't see games out. And, and that shows we haven't quite got it right in terms of experience and problem solving. And I still think too many times it needs half time to happen and 15 minutes to, to regroup and refocus and for us to, to give them some information. And we need the players to start doing more of that. Um, it will come. We've got the right, we right people. We'll, we'll bring a couple, couple more in. But I, I don't think we've quite got it right yet. And I suppose for, from your point of view, Alex, it's quite a big season for you. You came in, um, first team coach, started off the season, and then sort of halfway through, probably less than halfway through, took over as assistant manager. Was that a change for you? Have you had to change anything about you to do that? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think. It's, Understanding the pressure that um, that is on you, really, and especially during that couple month period that we had, that was shortly after Lee left, um, and Lee was brilliant at what he did. So he sort of had to step up and and and, and realise that the amount that comes into the role is is, is enormous, um, and just ensuring that with training along with James and, and Scott and Jimmy, um, and just yeah, and just realising that the hours it takes and the time it takes into it, and then. Trying to trying to get everything right through the week just just to get the three points on a Saturday, um, but yeah, losing Lee was quite a big loss really. Mm-hmm. I think um, he did a lot, uh, and he, he was a good character around the place. Uh, but it was uh, yeah, I was more than happy to step up when it came. Was it a big loss for you as a as a as a person as opposed to a football person because he's been with you for so long? Probably not as a person because I still speak to him a lot. He, Smile for dinner, go to his, we go out and have a pint. So, so I haven't lost him in that respect. And in some ways, it's a different relationship now because you haven't got that thing of football there. Um, but there was a lot that we lost from from the club. A lot of the ugly stuff I don't want to do that Alex doesn't particularly want to do. Lee would do. You know, sorting out training venues, sorting out equipment. <clears throat> some of the some of the relationships we built with players. Um, he was really good at that kind of thing. All of which takes time and and let us focus on the, yeah. the bits that we we like doing and that we're good at. So. We had to sort of reassess and work out how we bridge some of those gaps. So it was definitely a loss. And from a personal perspective, I'm still in touch with Lee a lot. So he's you know he's a good friend. Um, that's not changed. So if we go back all the way back to the beginning of the season, um, I think we spoke at the beginning of the season um, in terms of you felt you had quite a heavy squad. You had a lot of numbers. And that played out over the season in not a bad way for you overall with the number of injuries and illnesses that we had over the course of the year. We, we needed every one of the players we had and, and at times we had to bring, bring players in. Um, it's a real difficult balance in that because we don't have a reserve side. Players who aren't playing aren't playing. 
And then when they, they are called on, it's a big ask just to step in and, and do a job. So we had to try and get that balance right. I, I thought we were a bit heavy at the start, um, but I think that number probably is about you know 18 to 22, somewhere in there, the right players is probably the answer with, with some loans and um, as, as the season goes on. You know, saw that work well with Brad Kelly. Yeah. At the start of the season, though, I remember um, there were teams that were sort of dual regging that were in different leagues just to try and, it was a big fear of COVID and mm. self-isolation, so th that, that came a big factor in the recruitment, um, ensuring that we had big numbers. It, it wasn't necessarily manageable at the start, uh, like she says, just because we haven't got different teams in which we can sort of send them to. Um, but as the season progressed, we needed as many people as possible. We were, when we had an enormous amount of injuries, sort of different spells throughout the season, I think, we were happy to call back on them. We can sort of pull people back from dual regging or like get the likes of Brad Kelly from on, on loan. So, yeah, it was a bit a lot of numbers at the start, but yeah, yeah, it was. And then just want to go back to the first game of the season. Um, so, Bootle at home, I think we started with, I think we had a back five that day. We started with, yeah. well, back three, two wing backs. Um, down 1 0, and then a good last 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that was a real. We started off the season on a real high in terms of just not just that game, but we went on quite a decent little run there from there. Yeah, I think the way we won contributed to that. Not just the fact we came from behind and, and played well in the second half, but the manner of the goal and Kane's goal was was superb. Um, and it probably instilled a little bit of confidence because they, the boots are a good side. They've shown that since they're a hard side to beat. Hodgkins is one of the best in the in the league. So um, we were coming up against a, a real tough side and. Some of the young lads who stepped up, it probably showed them that, you know what, I'm, I'm okay, I, I can play in this league and give them that shot in the arm they needed. Uh, Kane's goal was, was obviously a goal of the season contender, but the, the first one as well um, showed showed how good Keo is. The, at most players, he just hits it from there, just pulls it across the, the six yard box for, for Morris to tap in. Yeah, uh, and, and Andy has that. Um, he, he has a great touch, great vision, and an ability to pick out a pass. Um, and, and he knows and he'll admit he's, his legs are going a little bit he can't be box to box anymore but he's adapted his game because he's a clever footballer so he's changed how he plays uh, so he's still contributing week in week out because of that he's, he's been vital to us this season and then the week after we go to um, Lower Breck in the FA Cup how, what was your thoughts on the, the overall FA Cup run we went on this year? it was a good run um, we made hard work for it in that, that game and the replay yeah um, but it was a it was a good run. Um, I thought we were we were probably slightly unlucky against Radcliffe. They did to us what we've done we did to a number of teams where we, we had them on the ropes in the first half, didn't didn't really kill them off. And then they came out a different side second half. They tweaked the system, they went a bit more direct and the, their experience told and they give us a, a bit of a lesson in that second half. Yeah, injuries caught up with us as well. I think we had we had a lot missing that day. Um I had to bring Pratty off at half time, mm. if I remember. And um, we had Mason play nine. Yeah. Um, and I, I just I, I just remember saying back then that injuries caught up with us. I, I think that we had we showed a really good 60 minutes. And then we didn't I think we had three defenders on the bench and a and a, and a keeper. Um, and we couldn't really change the game at that point. So we'd we'd been on a brilliant run, it was it was just unfortunate, but it was a great occasion for the for the club, one of the highest highest gates of the season. Um yeah, and we I thought we yeah, proud really mm. so we did well did well what did it feel like that game uh, so it, the the attendance was 736 that day I think it was the highest <clears throat> at the time it was the highest for 14 years at Seal Park which yeah. on its own that's got to make you proud for, for what it, people don't just come through the doors because it's the FA Cup they come because the team's been on a, a, a really good run of form as well how did that feel not just for you personally as as seeing so many people here but playing in front of that sucks it was a good atmosphere that day as well it, it was a good atmosphere it actually felt full and sometimes you can have four or five hundred in here and not feel full because yeah. they stand in front of the bar and, and they, when you're in the dugout you don't really yeah. notice them it felt full there was a really good atmosphere it was loud um, the Radcliffe fans were loud they contributed to it um, it felt like a, a really good important game of football and yeah it is It is the fans are coming down because they're enjoying what they see um, I think they I think they see players who are, who are grafting, who want to do well for the club, and I think that makes a big difference. The FA Cup is always good for us as well. Yeah. When you see the FA Cup um, signs walking out yeah. the tunnel and stuff like that, it is, it is 
some of this is special um, it's just unfortunate we couldn't get through that game um, and then so the first first few months of the season um, I remember speaking to, to you David about <coughs> we lost I think we lost against uh, Ramsbottom at home mm -hmm. we lost the Radcliffe game uh, we lost to Rylands and each time there was a, a reaction from each one how did you get that? What what happened to get that? Because it was quite a noticeable reaction from each game. There's, there's something I'm just telling the truth to the players, and I'm not a rant or a rave, and I don't throw cups around. I'll leave that to Alex when anything needs throwing. But it's not my style. But this, you can still sell players, and they know they know themselves when they let themselves down. Um, I thought on Rams, what we were just poor. I just thought we were just poor. We played badly. We just didn't get done by anything clever other than a team who wanted it more than us. Um, Radcliffe we talked about um, I thought Rylands did a number on us tactically and we learned a lot from that yeah. we, we learned an awful lot and we have to hold our hands up at times we've, we've not got it right as much as the players mm -hmm. so there's, there's that element of, of rolling it together but we need to be honest and when things aren't good enough from us from the players for whoever, whoever it is we've got to tell it like it is and then go out and do something about it yeah. Rylands gave us a run around that day um, it turned all down at half time and <clears throat> I remember just saying that we, you know, we've had one that half, we need to come out and, 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 and show, show something more. We had a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we had um, a disallowed goal in the first minute of that second half, which would have made a huge, I think that would have made a huge difference, but we said after that game that, for me, Rylands, were, if you finished above Rylands, you won't leave. They were the best team, that performance was the best performance against us this season in the league. Um, like I said, we learned, we learned a lot, a yeah. hell of a lot. Um, and then I want to go on to the FA Trophy. Obviously, it's it's a massive tournament for the club in terms of where it's been in the trophy before. Um, and this year took on bigger meaning with it being not necessarily the 40th anniversary, but the plans had been postponed through COVID. So we had the players <coughs> wearing uh, the specially made top. Um, a, it was quite a party atmosphere as well, but it was a, a cracking game against us. What was, what was your thoughts on that one? It was a, it was a good day, another good day. It was like everything sort of came together that day. I thought that you know the old players here, you had a good crowd on. Um, it was a decent game of football. Ossie Ossie came and played their part, um, and I kind of felt we owed them a little bit from the previous season anyway. So I did a little bit of extra spice. So no, it was it was good. It was um, it was a good day, and then kind of teed up that little run. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we've touched on the run, um, and obviously I think everyone would say um, the the three games. So for for me there were four. It was it was three games in an event. So we had the Kids Grove game, we had the um, Linux game, and we had the Hyde game, and then we had Bonfire Night here, which was just unbelievable as well. And then you go into a, a, a set of games where I, th I think it starts with Workington at home, where we we concede late on, and then. We got, I think, was it eight eight defeats in a row? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how do you how did you guys cope Not with well. that? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it was really strange. We lost deck. I think I think we lost deck at the City Liverpool one, um, and that probably through that run it really highlighted how important it was to us. But we also lost other other people to injuries or unavailability. Um, the Whitby game was. It was just a tough, it was they're a good side. They finished just outside the playoffs. They were a decent side. Um, we didn't show up against Prescott the game after that. I think that was just one of the most disappointing performances um, of the season, really. We didn't show up. And then, then there were some games that we were unlucky and some games we didn't show up. It, it was just, it was really, it was really difficult because nothing changed through the weeks. It weren't a case of the, the sort of lads weren't showing up through the week or weren't, weren't giving it. They're all at training. They were, I think, what, what changed was that we didn't have the defensive stability that we had. Um, we probably stopped scoring from set pieces, which, again, I think was a big factor in the first couple of months. Um, and things just sort of turned and were going the other way. And it, it would, yeah, it would, it would really testing a couple of months. Mm. And that's why I think the age of the squad showed a little bit. Um, Lads haven't been there before. They've not weathered that. They've not seen how you come out the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we were telling them it'll turn around, and we need to stick to our principles. But they had to keep believing that, buying into it. And it was tough at times. Plus, we you've then got 
second guessing yourself around formations and selections and yeah. you change you change this you change that um, and we, we didn't go too wild we chopped you know we did change the team a little bit and we rotated a little bit but we tried to stick to our principles and i think ultimately that that worked um but again we it was tough it was so we we talked so we talked a lot about yeah the pressure we're putting on ourselves and um to be fair, I didn't feel like from the board. I said this in interviews before. I didn't feel from the board. I didn't feel from the fans. Um, but we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to turn yeah. things around. Is it harder because you've been on such a good run, and you know we were top of the league at one point before that, and that makes it harder because you, you've almost put more pressure on yourself because you've done so well. A little bit. If you if you'd taken the results from the first first half of the season or whatever it was to, to Christmas, and you just mix them all up, and it'd have been you know win one, draw one, lose yeah. one. Yeah. People wouldn't have quite had this. They wouldn't have quite felt the same. It was the fact that it was such a good run and then such a bad run. Um, it probably did feel that much worse. It would, we also it was there was games in there that booted away. I will still never ever know for life in there how we've not won that game of football. I, I, honestly, it was yeah. I, you still look at it now and you're thinking the the keeper didn't just make one or two sort of great. He made five or six. Just saves that you probably never go and have no. a game. We've won three 0 at home, and the keeper got that match. Yeah, we well, made made eleven yeah. sa- eleven <laughs> saves, probably five or six of them world class saves. And we had the three times. Yeah. So yeah. I think that I think that at that moment, then the response that we got from the fans, and you especially, mm. yeah. you've talked openly about it. But the response that we got from the fans of yourself and, and Porter behind the behind the, the great, you just felt like we'd let everyone down for the for the period of that certain you know for a period of time, but. We just got such a great response. I think we had. Do we have gossip the week game after? Yeah, we gossip, gossip after the game after, yeah. and then we started on another little run again. Um, and it was yeah, it, it it was yeah, it was tough. I still I don't know how we got on that game. So we took. I was going to ask you about the Bootle game anyway because that it it how you couldn't make that up. But to say that you couldn't make it up the one before at the away game before that was eighteen seventy four away. And and you you've said that that was your worst ninety minutes watching football. Um, for, for everything, like not just the result, yeah. but the performance, the conditions. It was the whole thing was horrific. I remember turning to to JB and Bailey on the bench at half time and said, "Right, let's get come in, listen to the messages, and come back out and get yourself ready because you're going on." And the look in their eyes was like, "Do I have to?" <laughs> and it was that kind of day. It was I mean, had the score not been five three sixty, whatever it was at the time, it'd have been abandoned. There was no way the game should have been played. The ball wasn't rolling. The ball wasn't bouncing. You could barely tell who was who, given they were all covered in mud. It was a, it was a farce. But our um, Keystone Cop defending that day was was <laughs> unreal. We yeah we've watched that game back and I still can't necessarily pinpoint what went wrong in that even in the first half yeah. four three at half time I think it was and I, yeah it was it's it, it was it's just nuts. I think I think we had. I think that also showed the fragility of, of us all that we were on such a run that we got ourselves in such a winning position, and I don't know it, it, it came from us, it came from the lads on the pitch, it came from everyone that we got uh, the relief, but we were twenty minutes mm-hmm. in and we and we didn't get we didn't get the job done and, and the nightmare at North, which it, it turned out to be and it was wet, <laughs> cold. <laughs> But you, you've you've said it there as well, the reaction from people, and people still stayed out in, in that way. I know you will because you're a fan, but in the weather that was there, people still stood outside watching the game to the final whistle. That you got to be happy with and that. And they were in the bar after the away days, like we in the bar with the little boom box, yeah. singing along like nothing's happened. And, that, and I've never known anything like it, and the support... And at times they're the one that turn around and pick you up mm. on a run like that. They were picking us up, um, all the players because it hurt the players. It certainly hurt us. It certainly hurt the lads. It hurt everyone. And it was the fans that were the most jubilant about it and just just kept going and enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Turn around. Smile. That's what I get. Smile. How's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a smile about? Yeah. Um, and then then you come to um, not Boxing Day, twenty seventh of December. Glossop, Glossop at home. Um, and for you guys, you've already just said like you felt the pressure mm-hmm. going into that game, as as big a derby as we've probably got really. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that like going into that game? We made it must win. Well, yeah. not lose. We couldn't lose was where we we got to. Whatever happened that day, we couldn't lose the game. Local derby. We knew it'd be a good crowd. Um, 
um, we wanted, you know, we wanted to get something from that. We needed, we needed to turn things around, um, and we should have won the game. You know, Harry Hallam turned into uh, Manuel Neuer that day. I mean, he, he had an unreal game, um, but it just felt, it did feel like that just turned things for us a little bit. There was probably two weeks earlier we'd have lost that game one 0 mm. uh, and it just felt we looked a bit more resolute. Um, we looked a bit more certain at the back, and, yeah. and we looked more likely to win the leads, which I couldn't have said for a while. There was also um, something that was said to us sort of start of the season by some of the fans was gossip on the on Box, Box, uh, Boxing Day game, um, massive that it's really big. So it's not just the run that we're on; it's also just the thought of it is derby, it is the derby, and you know, and you do want to get one over on your rivals. And we, I think we were really, really lucky. Um, to not come out with three points, and they, you know, they were celebrating the point at the end of it, and, and we, and we weren't celebrating it, were we? But it was nice to finally put a stop to that horrible run. And then to to put a better stamp on the end of the run was to go to Rami away and win two one. Yeah. And arguably, it was a two one win, but it, we were far and away the better team in that game as well. Yeah, and they probably scored with their only real chance. Mm-hmm. Um, we had, we created quite a bit. We we moved the ball well. Um, Everybody played well. We we shut things up a bit. Banny missed a couple, and you know he responded really well. He came came off the bench and scored a scored a great goal, um, and it just showed the, the the power of the squad actually that that day. Now we that was a point when we had made the squad smaller, and it was like a bit of a we're in this together, um, and that that did mean a lot. That felt good. We'd obviously um, earlier in the season brought brought Jack Bannister in. Mm-hmm. It, I think he'd added a couple of goals before that, maybe one. Um, but do you, do you feel like that was a sort of a turning point in his time at Mosley? He's played against us a lot of time and, and torn us to pieces, but I think that that game there felt like the starting point of us seeing the, the yeah. sort of the real Jack Bannister. Yeah. You said it in the warm-up. I remember we'd finished the possession in the warm-up and, and you just said, Banny's on it, Banny's on it. And we'd obviously we'd put him on the bench, but we just knew that we were raring to go, um, really. And it, I think it was just a new year for Jack. Um, and it was just a, probably a new new year, new start, and and, and it got and it got going. And then from then to the to the end of the season, he was probably his most sort of consistent attacking player. Um, he nearly didn't come on though. Did he? he lost his shin pads, didn't he? Yeah. I don't think there's, 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 a, a, there's, there's, there's a drama. I don't, I don't know who shin pads he had on at the end, but it wasn't his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we sort of took Jack on, and 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 yeah, and he, and he he sort of did it for us. And but it was just the Keo Keo header before mm. that. I think we scored four. Not that we're counting, always <laughs> asleep over it, but um, it, everything about that day was really, yeah, it, it was just sort of weight of the world off your shoulders, really, for everyone involved, I think. And then, um, like I said, we sort of, for the rest of the season, I think we've, you, I've, I've split the season into three when I've mm-hmm. looked at it. So the start was brilliant, mm-hmm. the middle was a bit disastrous, and then the end was just. Perfectly summed up by you as consistently inconsistent. Yeah. Um, but if you look at those games and you go back through those games, do you feel... I suppose there's two sides to it. I, I guess one side wants to say, do you feel hard done by it? And the other side is, do you feel like it's a question of what if we'd have picked up points in some of them games? Well, we, we talked about this and we, we had run calm and we had, we had made that a must win. At that point, to keep anything, any hope of the players alive, we really yeah. have to win that. Mathematically, it was possible beyond yeah. that, but... Realistically, it wasn't. Um, and Brunkon came and played very well, deserved the win. But then they run, they went on. I think even if we'd have won that game and then won every game thereafter, we still would have caught them. Yeah. No, they didn't um, drop enough points for us to even. And the run they went on after after that were relentless. Yeah. Well, then on Clitheroe, because it, yeah. it was like yeah. neither wanted to lose, did they? Mm. I think yeah. were a, I think, yeah, there is, a, there is an element of frustration there, but. Just because the sort of success that we had at the start, of, well, you know, the success that we had at the start of the season, but I think as well, probably January showed where we were, where we were as a month. Um, so sort of did well against Ryland, managed to yeah. lose, and, yeah. and but then beat Market Trade and beat uh, Rame, mm-hmm. beat Marine away, but lost to Clitheroe, and, and I think that's probably that's probably a fair reflection of where we are. That not just you going on your six, seven winning game streaks. That month there, where we were resolute and no team sort of tore us apart, and we never give up in that month. And yeah, it was yeah. I think it's just 
it's disappointing. It's looking at the playoff final, for example, like on on Saturday, you think done done them three and away, done them four and away. Um, but they're they're two outstanding sides, um, and whoever was going to win that was well well worthy of winning it. And that that's the difference. It's they didn't drop the the same points. If you look, I think where where I probably feel we did leave a bit on the table. Some of the some of the plots up here, mm. uh, Newcastle here, Kids Grove here. A lot here actually. We didn't we didn't yeah. really do make enough of home advantage um, against it, you know, sides in the in the sort of bottom half. And I think that's where that's where we need to improve. If that that's where teams like Marine and Runcorn and Leek do the business. That that's why they, they finish top top five. Yeah, I think as well. It's the, there were a massive gap from where we finished the playoffs. I don't think we're that far off no. off it, but I don't think we're good, we're good enough to get in it either. Um, it would be nice to not finish so far out of them, um, and I think that. But at the same time, we need to be realistic and, and realise that we're we're not at the same level as what some of them clubs are in that in that sort of little bunch. What's the difference there? Is it is it that we've got a, a squad that you you've, you've you're actively still developing that are coming through, or is it that they're? I don't know. Yeah. So so at the start of the season, I predicted he'd be up there, and I did pretty well. And there's a high correlation. Between between money and and where league, where people finish in the league, um, and it matters at this level because you can attract those players to come down a level. The lads who've got a ton of experience. You know, if you if you want a twenty goal season striker, you're gonna have to pay big money for them because it's so it's so hard to come by. If you want a centre half who's got two hundred and fifty league games under his belt, you're gonna have to pay money because they're hard to come by. Um, we we're in, we're going a different direction. we we're, we're building a team. Um, we're we're looking to bring players through who who will develop and they'll be better a year on for that development and then try and add a little bit to it. Um, but it's tough. And next year you've got Macclesfield coming to the league. That you know they for everything Ryland's had, Macclesfield have probably <laughs> probably gone times two. Yeah. Um, so so it's not going to get any easier. I, I'm going to go back before we go forward. So you've touched on it already as well. In there is the the Marine game. So. I think if you look at different different games through the season, I think sometimes you'd say your highest point, like you've said before, was that little run. But Marine's got to sit right up there as, as one of the best. Yeah. I think for me, my personal point of view, <clears throat> I go to some away games on a Tuesday night. No, Linux is a perfectly good example as well, where I'll drive up on my own in my car, sit there and think, it's going to be a long night tonight, because you know, we could, yeah. in both of those yeah. games, you get back in the car after... You guys will probably feel the same. Obviously, more confident going in, probably. But um, that was that was up there with one of our best performances for a number of seasons, along with the Linux and Hyde games and, and Kids Grove. How do you feel about that? I think um, they were fragile at the time, and we and we spoke about that. There were a big call um, selection wise. We left Keo out that night, and I know how, how disappointed he was with that, but. <clears throat> it's probably a testament to Bailey that we ended up putting Bailey in midfield for big mm-hmm. games, um, and that's what that's what we wanted. We worked hard on turning the ball over and going forward fast. It was just sort of language that we used a lot was forward fast, forward fast. And the JB goal sums that up perfectly, and, and Brownie's penalty. And um, I think that that was a good night. It was a, we got an early pen, finally got brought down. We got an early pen. And then we weathered, well, I thought, right, we weathered a, mm-hmm. weathered a storm for the next 40 minutes. Um, and we came in at half time. I, th- I just think we said, we've just got to you know, keep tight. We'll cruise chances, we'll get the chances, we'll know the weaknesses that, we'll, the weaknesses that we highlighted. And then we got another penalty. We didn't have a penalty for the entire run uh, that we went on. And we managed to get two that night. And they were, I think they were two sort of stone wallers. Um, and then the Banny goal at the end sort of summed it up for me. Um, and we never looked in doubt. Really, I think it was a brilliant, were a brilliant night. It were, it one of them that they had to get going again, um, and we we just managed to stop it. Um, it was good. It, 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 it was. I think it was so good because we we worked on a game plan. We talked about the rivals to be here, and one of the things we learned was, um, and we maybe did this too much at part points, but kind of think about the opposition. How yeah. are you gonna How are you gonna stop them? And how you, and what that night we did it perfectly because we we focused on our strengths and how our strengths would would disrupt what they were trying to do. And that was why Keogh didn't play, Brownie played up front, because we knew he would just run around and he would hassle and you know, no time, wouldn't let them settle and 
do all the things that Brownie does, and it and it and it just meant that Mason and Banny just got yeah. got on the ball high up the pitch, yeah. and it just worked well. Our tactics worked. The players delivered everything he wanted. He worked hard. Tom Scott had a had a world. He only came and played a couple of games for us. He was excellent. Yeah. That made a couple of excellent saves. It just, just everything seems to fall right. It's the opposite of how it had done in November and December. I felt good driving home that night. And so I couldn't find a McDonald's that was open. That's <laughs> yeah. the edge of The back four we had then as well. We had, I think it was the last time we were able to play that back four. Um, and we had, we had a good mixture of sort of athleticism mm. and, and sort of dominant in positions, but also age and experience. Um, and I just thought we, we, we managed situations in the games really well that, that night. And, and yeah, yeah, it was it were, it were nice to sort of put the 5 nil defeat in the trophy the year before. Where you were there, were you? Yeah. Oh, I would have played there as well. Yeah, yeah. We've had two in a row, <laughs> two, two spankings in a row there, so yeah. that was a really good one, <clears> that one. Um, so you, you've just mentioned uh, about the back four that we had that night, it was the last night, and we've spoke about Jack Bannister coming in already, but how important, well not important, but how good was Freddie Sass when you brought him in? Because I think that was his last game before he got injured. Yeah. He, it was great that he signed a contract for next season, mm-hmm. um, but really, a really, really promising left back at this level for us. That's a bit of a capture, that do you think? Left back's hard to come by. Left footed players are hard to come by. When you've got a left back who, who is pretty comfortable on his right, he's six foot one, good in the air, a proper athlete, and then throws it about 70 yards, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty potent mix at this level. So he was a, he was a really good capture, and he's brilliant in the dressing room, really good lad. And fitted fit in the squad really well, so he was um, he was impressive in the games he played, and, and will only get better. He's twenty one, you know, he's he's still got a lot of development to do. I think he was enormous. I think he only played a handful of games before he got injured, but, but really tied him, really really tied him up. Um, and it was just after that we realised the unbalance of not being able to have player left or player there, um, and we must have had four different options there mm. the rest of the season once Freddie got injured and it was really difficult to try and not play with the left set, left put the player down the left um, and I think it caused us a lot of problems of, you know keep passing inside pressure and, and everything else and like the the long throw just we were able to just relieve pressure at times that because he came in in a run uh, yeah. I think it took him a good possibly three games to get his first win and mm-hmm. um, but yeah no good kid and it was a good signing um, and t- talking about people that used at left back, uh, and it definitely worth a mention this season, um, Ben Richardson. So mm-hmm. came, he w- came in, um, he made his 200th appearance for, mm-hmm. for Mosley during the season, um, and then probably quite a, a poignant moment for everyone. One of his last games here this season was scoring that goal against Kids Grove, and that was quite a special moment, yeah. probably for everybody. Yeah. What sort of impact he had on the squad overall? Obviously, went out mm-hmm. on Joel Reg as well, but as a, as a person in the dressing room, a, a big player for this season, even though he's not always been here. Yeah, he's, he's an experienced player, and, and he he does understand what it's like and what it takes to, to do well at this level. So he's somebody who will get around the players and um, and talk to them. And he's not the only one. There are a couple of more experienced players who will drop a text and a phone call to other players at times, and and he he's one of them who, who does that. So he has been a big play for us, and, and and to be fair to Ben, he's had a, a difficult season with stuff going on away from football, uh, and so he's been in and out, and everything I've asked him to do in terms of dual regi twice, and <clears throat> coming back in and doing jobs at different points, right back, left back, um, travelling as sub, and he's never once has he complained or moaned about anything. He's just just got on with it. He's just a very good, um, you know, he's not a professional, but a very good professional in terms of in terms of attitude. Um, and, and a good influence on some of the other players. Yeah, all of Ben's bit. I think you've got with Ben, you've got um, like I said, the experience, the quality, the know-how. But he doesn't have love sort of the club and everything else that comes with it. And probably Marine was a really, really nice moment for him. That it, I remember him saying, I don't know what might be saying, but I remember him saying that, that that's worth all the sort of dual regging, the hard yards to get fit again after what happened in the summer and and just. Yeah, and, and that, it would be nice that he had that night. And it would a big part of that as well. I mean, we had to take him off because he's daft bucket. But he got on <laughs> throwing the ball away. Um, but yeah, no, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, just a really nice bloke. Um, and like I said, that, that kid's got to get in that goal as well. I think that'll live long for him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then just on the subject of experience um, as well, it'd be silly not to talk about KO now. Mm-hmm. Um, 
He's, I think he's played, apart from in goal, I think he's played pretty much every position. Not not for you guys, but through his career at Mosley. But he's he's been his top scorer this season. You know, he's, he's played as many minutes as most people. Like you said, he's missed out yeah. in a couple of games where you wanted legs. But how much of an influence has he had this season? How how good is he and can keep him the next season for you? His influence is, is huge. I think it's difficult to overstate his influence. Lads respect him. Lads respect him not because he's, he's Andy Keogh and he's the captain. Lads respect him because of what he does week in, week out on the training pitch. He trains like he plays. He's, and he's a good footballer. He's, he's an unbelievably good footballer. You watch him pass a ball in training, the way he pulls things out of the air. And he's just quality. There's, it, there's just one, one thing on that <clears> subject was against 1874 in the last game. It was it. It might have been them or witness, but there's his back heel flick on the volley to someone, yeah. which is just outrageous. He pulls them off. It's just ridiculous. Well, it's the fact he sees people them. don't appreciate it, do but they? he sees them. I mean, that, that's a lot of players don't even see that. Never mind have the audacity to try it and then the skill to to succeed with it. Um, so you can't understate that. And what what we found as the season's gone on, and, and Andy's kind of I think realised this himself. His role just has changed, and he's, he's used his experience and he's used his know how. And he's play, he'll play as a nine, he'll play as a ten. Um, but then he'll know when to just drop in ten yards and, and do a job in there for us. Um, he'll know when to, to hold things up and get them up the pitch. Uh, he, he, it's that element of it. And, and he demands more of people. You know, he, he wants people he wants people doing the right thing around him. And, and that rubs off. He demands more from people. He demands more from us, certainly in training. Um, he's not just a captain that sort of leads by, has the authority. But also the lads use him to bounce sort of things off him, mm. and they use they use him as they sort of use him as a bit of a you know father figure mm. with two because we have got some young lads in there. And it'll give off loads of advice, decent advice, and I can't speak highly enough of him. I think he's he's made the transition from well me to being coach assistant easier. I think I have a good relationship with. Him. I'm happy being honest with him either way. Same with you, and and his role has changed. His role, his role certainly has changed. I think he's, he's dug deep for his Earlham away in the Manchester Prem Cup. Um, it was probably that performance, one of the best captain performances I've, I've seen, that he just dug us through. We weren't good enough second half that, no. that game at all. It was, we only got through that, that, that game because of him. I remember uh, he set Mason up in the 90th, didn't he, for the winner, and he couldn't even get off the floor to celebrate. <laughs> he was still sprawled out in the corner. Um, but he's great, and, he, and all the fans love him. Um, he managed the fans on that night. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of them, one of the fans called the ref uh, an expletive, and he, he said, "What, what are you doing? He's not going to give us a penalty if you do yeah, that." And yeah. he went, "Yeah, but he is." When he went, "Yeah, he is, but don't do it anyway because yeah. we won't win one." But his influence is everywhere. It's brilliant, yeah. great yeah. guy. And and that experience rubs off, and he, and you, you'll see that on the pitch. You'll see him telling players to leave the referee alone, move them away, out off the ref, and uh, yeah, it's been superb for us. Yeah. And, and and he's he's got seasons left in him yet. Yeah. Um, we could we could sit here and talk about every player in the team because I think just about everybody has had an, a, a, at some point in the season has contributed massively. So you look at people like Devon, uh, JB, who we've spoke about in numerous interviews. Kane Hickman, exactly the same, has been brilliant. Um, I think it, the, probably the best place to sort of end talking about players is is on deck. Mm -hmm. So feel. I think everyone feels for him that he ended up on 149 and not 150. Yeah. But um, I guess from my point of view, how much of a vindication is it of of you having to, or not convincing him to stay, but keeping him here at the club for him to then take the step that's the right step for him to go up to a National League North side? And he took a bit of convincing on that. Um, so my, my thing, I've been very open on this, is we don't want to stand in players' way. We want players to come here, we want to develop and be successful beyond beyond Mosley. If you get the right sort of players and you get that mentality, you will bring players who give 100% on the pitch, who will listen, who will learn, who will improve, and, and that will bring success as a club. And when they do move on, you'll find another one who wants to do exactly the same thing, and and, and it becomes uh, it becomes kind of self-fulfilling. Uh, and and Deck, at times, I, I probably questioned his ambition a little bit. We both talked about it. We weren't sure what he wanted out of the game, um, other than to win. He's a proper. He's a winner. He is a winner. He hates losing anything. If you if you give a bad decision in training, you know about it. Um, but it was, a, it was a good, decision. 
it was a, it was a, it was a good move. It was a good move at the right time to the right club. Um, and, and I went across when he played the game against Curzon before he came back from low and he stepped right in. He looked completely at home at it at that level. And it, and I think he, he's got all the attributes and he's still young enough to, to go again if he yeah. if he wants it. I think that's with Deck it's probably maybe a little bit of self confidence, maybe a bit of belief. Um I know he's the best footballer I've managed by a long way. Um, and, and probably one of the best players that's been at the club for a long time. I think he's walked away uh, every end of season awards with a handful of awards every time and has become a better footballer all the time. It, it's worth saying 149 appearances at this level at his age. Most people who've, who've played 149 games for us have played it over two, three different spells, but he stayed here. Um, and yeah, he'll always, I think he'll go down as a, mm-hmm. as yeah. a, a legend in and, his own way. Kobe yeah. probably robbed him of 50. Yeah. Um, you know, to, to, to have done what he's done at that age shows, shows what player he is and, and the character as well. The biggest thing I'll say about Deck is he, last season, he was a good footballer. This, this season, he was also a good leader. He was a voice in the changing yeah. rooms. Mm-hmm. He, he, he just grown, he matured. Um, and you know, if you look at that back four at times, how young he was and he was leading that and how good it was. Yeah. And that says a lot <clears> about him. I mean, we, um, when he were injured, we, I, mean, I mentioned it earlier, but we missed him enormously. But I think it hurt him just as much as anyone else. That, I mean, we were watching from the sideline, he didn't miss a game, he came to every game yeah. that we played. I think you were, uh, I remember him for the gloss up game. He said, "I'm def- definitely going to be fit. Definitely going to be fit. Physio won't show at all, but I'm definitely going to fit." I think he had yeah. Christmas dinner with an ice pack on his ankle to try and get him fit. And he was fit. I think he played the first one seventy-five percent fit or something like that. And he, he was just a different level. Um, he's a really good kid as well. He's a really good kid. And like you said about leading, he sort of came in, led, um, held us accountable, held everyone accountable to make sure that we wanted to. To, to try and achieve what we want to achieve, um, and I, I'm so he'll only go on and mm. kick on and have a great career. You touched on that there as well uh, about sort of like the pack. Uh, the, mm. We've got lots of good individuals, but you talked about Deck being um, there at away games, and something that stuck out this year has been um, a lot of injured players, a lot of players who are unavailable turning up every week to come and watch the team play and yeah. support, and then whether it's home or away, um, I've. Probably mentioned Dale. Mm-hmm. I've seen Freddie a lot, but uh, Dale's there every week, home and away, supporting the team. How good is that for sort of that pack mentality? I think the dressing room is important. We we've when we recruit, we we recruit good players, but we also try and recruit good people. People who fit into that dressing yeah. room and buy into what we want to do. And and I think we've got that mostly right this season. If you look at the players, and you said they they're in it together. Um, lads are training injured, buying into doing the rehab, all all that, all those things that really matter, really make a difference. We've they've done it, um, and that's not us kind of putting guns to the and saying you've got to turn up. That's them wanting to be here. It's just with Dale as well. It's, you can have a conversation about how it's going. He's been out since first week of October, and he played a played a couple of games in January, February time. But he'll tell you himself, he weren't right. He's been sort of mm-hmm. doing us a favour really more than anything. Um, <clears throat> but you're able to sort of speak to Dale about how the how things go because he's he's witnessed it, he's watched it. Um, he still speaks to him regularly. And he'll he'll sort of chuck in his opinion on mm-hmm. on the certain things that are happening. There is method behind the madness of recruitment. It's not just a case of let's sign in. Oh, so and so has been released from so and so. We'll just sign in. We a we've got to be better than what we've got. That's probably the first thing. Um, and and are they going to fit in? And that's. If we go back to the run itself, was 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 something for a large period of time. You could argue that we're probably too loyal to the players that got us on the first run. But it was it was that you know we were, mm-hmm. we were proud of him, wanted to develop him, a couple of, and we only it weren't like we got rid of ten and brought ten in. Um, we believed in what we were, what we were trying to trying to build, and and hopefully that that will that will continue next year. It's it's not a case of let's just bring anyone and anyone in. Are, are they going to be good people? And, and I'd like to think that Dale especially has bought into everything about Mosler Football Club. Absolutely. I think, um, I don't know anyone that can say a bad word about him. Definitely. He's a good guy. Mm. Yeah. Good guy and a miss. You know, Jordan, <coughs> yeah. Jordan, Jordan came in and, and he's deputised, but he hasn't got that experience and calmness that Dale, Dale has. Um, comes with experience. Dale's played a lot yeah. of football. And, and he's, you talked about Keo, Dale's similar. You know, he talks to players, he passes that on. 
He's great in the dressing room. He's great around training. He's dropping texts to his players, um, and he was still doing so a lot of that when he was injured. Yeah. Well, so I guess from from a overall point of view from the season, if you just rate out of ten, first first full season at, at step four, how do you think it's gone? Both of you. It's difficult to say. I've, I've hit every objective I probably was set at the start of the season. I've set, set myself. Um, there were highs and lows, but kind of frustrated a little, a little bit with some. Just, just how we how we finished. I think we were a bit further yeah. away than the players than we than we should have been. Um, so I don't know, six or seven. There's, there's a lot, lot of good, a lot of good there. More, more highs and lows. A lot to build on. But frustrating. Yeah, I think that's something similar. I think before the start of the season, the top five, top six really, could be there. That speaks for itself. In my, I think they're the arguably Rams bottom could be up there with that as well. Um, I always think we were in the pack below that and trying to finish above the pack, trying to finish at the top of the pack below that. I think that's probably where, where we where we ought to be, and we we nearly got there. I think it's positive. To, I, th- I certainly think it's a positive season, but there are a bit of a sort of bit of sweet where you're thinking, if we'd have done this differently, if we'd have picked this up, if we'd have done that, if we'd, we'd have ch- I've I've said quite a lot. I've learned loads. Loads and lo- loads, just about probably squad balance mm-hmm. the entire time. No, always knowing full well where your squad is and where it's at. I think there were periods in the season that we lost Freddie Brownie, Deck, Ben J, um, Adlo, Cade. We, we sort of had a period where we we lost them in drips and jabs, and we were thinking, oh, um, Ben will be back in a couple of weeks, or Freddie will be all right, or mm-hmm. Deck's only just but in. Before you know it, we we had to we had to call up some youth kids to try and put mm-hmm. the numbers at training. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of things we could do differently, but really on, on a whole, I think it's a it's a good season. It's been certainly been a good season off the pitch as well for the club. So more the same, but well. And then next season, so I think you you said it a couple of times. Um, next season's harder than this season, not just because of how we've played, but mm-hmm. the teams that come into the league, the teams yeah. that have dropped out. Um, you know, we, we've we've took six points, well, twelve points off the teams in the bottom mm-hmm. two, um, and you would say it'll be hard to get twelve points off the two teams that come up. Well, mm-hmm. Skelmersdale and Macclesfield <clears throat> are going to be better. Yeah. Um, I'd be very surprised if Macclesfield aren't emulating Lions and Twelve Months' time. Um, they've got the resources, they've got the network, they've got the pull. Um, not not just mon- monetary, um, but they've got three thousand. Fans watching, that's a great draw. They've got a good setup at Moss Road. There's a lot, a lot that could turn a player's head there. So they can, they, they're good recruitment. They'll be bringing players from two divisions higher, um, and it's difficult to compete against that. Um, Skelmersdale have been excellent for a couple of years. They, they probably would have come up, but for COVID, they've been on FA Cup runs. They've, um, but they've shown the, the quality in the in the playoffs. So. They'll be a, they'll be a difficult side to play against, and and the win have come down. There were there were going to be no mugs, so I, I think that those three significantly strengthen. I, I think I don't. You look at the, the two far at the bottom. I think we're much much better than that, and I, and I don't think we're far off replacing what's out at the top. So, but do you feel like the the flip side to that is you've got a team now who the core the, the guys who've all seem to have signed contracts in in the towards the back end of the season have all got. 40 to 50 games of, of this level under their belt and some of those games where you've talked about we've made a mistake here or a mistake there that that's something that they'll they'll learn from and move on mm-hmm. and we'll become a better team next season yeah definitely I think yeah def- managing moments in games is, is enormous um, and I just look back at like the JB is just we've asked him to do four or, four or five different mm-hmm. roles within midfield this season and he's done, he's done it all and if anything next season is going to be Asking to do more and more, we put quite a lot of emphasis on JB to try and create a lot. It allows Kane to be Kane, which is just go and <laughs> close down a corner flag or wherever he wants to, and do sort of do what Kane does because he can engage a press eye up and, and start an attack behind their line a lot of the time. So I think I think we've learned yeah we've learned a lot as a, as a unit. I think we've I've, I've we've certainly learned a lot as, as a management team and, and coaching staff and everyone else. Um, yeah, and it's just it's, we with the, with the people that's coming in with the leagues and you know your Mac and your and your Whitten and stuff like you've still got the giants of working together. Because they're a, a one corner, a fantastic season. And 
but it's exciting because it's not it's not just a case of all oh, you know it's just sort of turn up you, you, you're playing against big crowd you're playing mm. a big crowd big away days um, and it's yeah it's exciting I think it's really exciting I think it's one of the most competitive leagues um, one of the most competitive leagues going mm. I think it'll be really good okay thanks thanks for your time sorry cheers Nathan cheers no problems